Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a video for you in the Tier 8 Soviet Premium Cruiser, the Mikhail Kutuzov. And as you can see, we're playing on Mountain Range Domination Mode, and we are small. There are some Tier 10s around, but that doesn't really worry me too much in this ship, and that's kind of two reasons. Just like the Neptune game the other day that wound up in a Tier 10, I feel having the smoke on a cruiser really helps you fight above your tier. And that's definitely the case. The second one is this ship lives to start fires. And if you focus on that and do nothing but that and just become a little arsonist, you can have some amazing results even against bigger targets. Now this game itself does come down right to the final few seconds, so strap in and enjoy the ride as myself, Armored Chimera, and Flying Goomba try to prove ourselves in this tier 10 battle. Right off the bat, you can see a cab in Alpha, and my plan was to get up near this island straight ahead of me and use it as partial cover, my smoke filling out the rest. Now, as you can see, I was off paying not quite enough attention and lost a chance to shoot at the cub to start with, and that was really me being stupid. When you play a lot of games in the same day, sometimes you just zone out for a few seconds or see something else and you go stare at it. But now I'm going to have to make it up because this Kabarovsk has gotten away, haven't really done too much to him. I did manage to light him on fire and break a module there. Unfortunately, you can see he's fixed it because the damage ticker isn't increasing. So Armored Chimera in his Edinburgh has joined me in this smoke and Goomba's actually going to as well for a bit here though he's gonna push past us. That's probably all for the best is too many ships sitting in the smoke is just torpedo bait. Now some may go you shouldn't even sit in it like that. I mean you saw a cab there's gonna be torpedoes but Armored Chimera, I've already asked for him to have his Hydro Acoustic Surge activated. So at least going to have a bit of warning. And I do have the Propulsion mod on this to just help with acceleration a little bit. Let's see me backing up to just get all the guns. And all I'm thinking about here is trying to start fires. Once I get a fire on one ship, it's time to switch to the next. Rinse and repeat. When the first ship puts the fire out, light them back on fire. And the goal is to force a ship to use its damage cooldown and then light them on fire. So you can see my smoke dissipating there once again. I've got an Edinburgh right beside me. Just ask Kaz to pop some smoke, and he does. And we're off to the races again. Got a Hindenburg who... I'm not sure what this guy was thinking. He's taken Benson beating in his side, two high rate of fire cruisers right in the nose, and he's not really doing anything about any of them. I make a bit of a mistake here. I accelerated forward to uh, throw my torpedoes, but I didn't get all the way to stop, so I'm getting really close to driving out. And I kind of find once you commit, you gotta fully commit. I knew I was gonna get detected, so I just go back to full speed, because I don't want to get caught at partial throttle trying to reverse. And fortunately, Torpedo hits him, wipes him out, so now I can switch over to this Megami. And that's kind of just how you play this. You just keep your guns shooting. It doesn't matter what, you just keep them firing. And if you can manage to do that, you're going to light a ton of fires, do a bunch of damage, probably pick up a witherer, feel like an absolute turd for doing what you just did, but you'll walk away with the win. And this Mogami presents originally a pretty easy target, which is why I had loaded AP, but they were smart enough to turn away. They got themselves out of that kind of side-on threat. So, back to HE. You can see he's already got a fire burning, so to me, in my mind, I'm thinking A, he still has damage control, or B, he's wasted, in which case, light all the fires. But, since that one went out and my next one did, you know, okay, he just used damage control. 
try not to hit him for a few seconds because your fire's not going to stick right away. Then try to light him on fire. We have no spotting here, unfortunately. So Armored Chimera drives out to be the spotter. Kind of takes one for the team. And when you're playing in a division, someone's got to do it. And you kind of just take turns being the guy. It sucks to do because, as you can see, lots of things are shooting at him. But it, it kind of just it rotates. It's Someone's got to be the person to do that or you're never going to get any damage. I pick up the kill there on the Mogami and I'm up to 41,000 damage with two kills. Though things aren't looking too good for the team. We can see that Kabarask, I line up a quick shot and I'm getting really good at dialing these destroyers in because I actually hit them first volley at around 12 kilometers. But the reason things aren't looking good, you can see there's five of us who are kind of detached from the rest of our team. Those four ships on my team over near Charlie are all alone against pretty much the entirety of the enemy team. So they've got some work to do. And all we can do is try to close and help. So you can see all of us pointing pretty much straight across A, just full throttle, closing. I say hi to one of the players on the other team who I think I've played with or against too many times to count from uh, ranked seasons right before I start lighting them on fire because that's the type of guy I am. I know in one of my other battles, one of my subscribers, uh, oh, Simple Imbecile, I think their name was, kind of got upset because I let them on fire, they put it out, and I just went back to lighting them on fire. But it's kind of what this ship does, and unfortunately it is part of the gameplay. Now, by the time you see this video, the new captain skills will be out. And that means you have the ability to prevent your ship from having four fires. You can minimize it to three by taking the one damage control skill. That's definitely going to help a lot of battleships out there and probably makes that skill really worthwhile taking because three fires aren't nearly as dev devastating as four can be. And right here is kind of where I've got to make a decision. Do I go south or do I go north? Part of me wants to go south you know, get around behind Big Nig there in the Grosser Curve first and put pressure in behind him, but at the same time I don't want to leave Armored Chimera alone on a flank. And a bit of a miscommunication with Flying Goomba here. He decides he's going to go down, drive in behind this Curve first to try to force him to be side on to us. And really for myself and Chimera, in the cruisers we're in, we didn't need the target to be side on. I'm never doing penetrating damage in that sense. You know, I'm all about trying to light fires, and Armored Chimera's Edinburgh really just shoots for superstructure to get penetrating shots up there. And as a result, you'll see what happens here, but Flying Goomba figured he had the Kerr first side on to us the whole time and, you know, really helped us out, but you can see really the Kerr first is never side on to us. And it ends up costing Goomba his ship because he drives into the middle of the cap and gets focused. And that's one of those things where you have to communicate. Had I done a better job and he done a better job of communicating, I would have said, no, don't do that. That's silly. Like, we don't need that to happen. We can do this. And as you can see, we're stacking a lot of damage onto this curve first. And you can see my damage counter just running up with each volley. And when the fires were lit, they were doing the job too. And it's one of the reasons I kind of like driving these rate of fire cruisers over the kind of penetration cruisers, as I call them. You know, the Brits and any of the lower tier Russians and stuff, where it's just about lots and lots of shells. You don't necessarily need targets to be right side on and, oh my word, for North Carolina just erased that Kutuzov, which at the time in the game I was like, hey Armored Chimera, shoot shoot the Kutuzov, he's side on, like, I can get the Kerr first. And, well, our North Carolina took the opportunity and aced him. 
And what's going to transpire from here on out really is going to decide a lot of the game. And a huge shout out to uh, her North Carolina player there. I think his name's David Wiruch. Um, he made this game possible for both myself and Armored Chimera. Because without him, we would have had no vision. But at the same time, without us, he wouldn't have had the just raw volume of fire we were able to put down on enemy targets. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about up here. So, first target up, Mogami. As we come around the corner right away in comms, telling Chimera, this is what we shoot. And in a situation like this, where you're down on caps and down on kills, you have to erase targets as fast as possible. It does not matter how much health they have, you just you take out the first target you have available. And you can see pretty quickly here, we're doing that to this Mogami. One or two more volleys from each of us, and they're a goner. Unfortunately, my volleys aren't exactly hitting hard, but Armored Chimera's got that British AP, it's doing its work. I light a pair of fires there, and now things are looking good. And already, we're talking about, the second this guy's dead, this is the next target. Guns come over, and right away I'm shooting. And what I'm trying to do here is, once again, just light fires. And that's when I see Anvil get spotted, and I kind of just go, Anvil's the guy we gotta hit. And Chimera says, I've got smoke. I'm like, Roger, pop it. I pull up in behind him, get into cover, and at this point, this is where we're relying on our North Carolina. But we're also keeping him safe. Chimera and I are going to focus this North Carolina and try to remove the 60,000 hit points he came out of that channel with in far less time than he can do to ours. Now, he does show a lot of side here, and our North Carolina is going to take advantage of that. But by us assisting and taking out the targets closest to our surviving battleship, we preserve his hit points, which is crucial late game like this. If he gets focused down, it's over. And you can see how quickly we are able to focus down collectively this North Carolina, you know. And you just keep the guns going. Keep the guns going. Never stop shooting. And you can fight your way out of these situations. Like, we're down on the score 800 to 342. We're down by one ship. And I'm still confident that we can win this. Things have to go right, but we can. And it's going to come down to the last few seconds as to whether or not this works out. And for some of you, I bet you can guess what the result may be and what we're stuck trying to chase down to end this game. So I've already written the North Carolina off. He's burning. I know they're stuck. I switch to the next target. Chimera finishes the North Carolina off, and we're on to the next one. David NXS is... he's gonna burn. Well, that's at least until this cab was spotted. And I've got the fire going, the cab's in and out of detection, and it just hasn't worked out that the timing has been such that he's spotted when I'm loaded, and I, you know, as I said, you have to keep the guns going. If you know, I slow up for even a few seconds to wait for fire. That's potentially huge amounts of damage left on the board, and it's just not something we can afford. I pick up my Confederate there, and this North Carolina isn't long for the world, and I'm just praying for the fire. There it is. Unfortunately, his damage control is still active. I just keep shooting, keep shooting, hoping for that fire. All three of us are focusing this one target down. You can see we do have a friendly cruiser, Hoff on a flank. He was being chased by a couple of battleships. Those are Dmitry Donskoy, and he definitely put in a very good effort himself in this battle. And it's not going to be long, but as you can see, I'm not long for this world either. I turn, I think I dodge most of the major damage, but I'm definitely probably done here. There's a Kabrosk in that smoke. They've got great rate of fire. I have no means of detecting them. 
chimeras out of uh, hydroacoustic searches. So I'm just doing my best to shoot him in the smoke, get my torpedoes off, and I know I'm done. But the game is not over and we can still win this. And it's kind of just a waiting game and it's so frustrating. You can see there's another volley, just misses, I'm Chimera. And really just hoping that uh, he can pull through. And luckily he does, he gets the cab. And way over here you can see our Dmitry Donskoy is making the suicide run. He's decided, I'm getting this Bismarck, gives up his side, but gets all the torpedoes in the water. So now it comes down. Three minutes, 40 seconds to find the enemy destroyer. They've got a massive point lead, clearly insurmountable. You can see people on our team trying to congratulate, but this isn't congratulations yet. And it's actually going to be armored chimera who comes through you know i was in comms i'm like we've got to find that dd you just have to drive to his last known position and all we know is he was capturing a and this is where you just have to hope and pray three minutes three minutes for that destroyer to make a mistake all he has to do is drive to a1 and we lose there's no way we're coming back from this. We fought our way back, we took the ships out, and this would be an absolute heartbreak to lose basically on a technicality. Because real world, that destroyer, you know, given 20 minutes, isn't taking <laughs> these three ships out. But because it's a game, and it's all about points in the timer, he's got the chance. You can see the Donskoy is torn north. Everyone is homing in on this circle because we don't even... The last known position was over at B. He hasn't been spotted in forever. Chimera doesn't have hydroacoustics, so he's got no means of knowing if torpedoes are coming his way. All he knows at this point is, yes, he is indeed spotted. Someone is looking at him. And that someone is a Benson who sat in the middle of the frickin' cap. A minute and 55 seconds, there's no way a Benson's getting away from an Edinburgh. And that's the volley to finish it. And if I'm honest, I expected that to be a loss. I thought the Benson was long gone and we were just going to lose it on points. But he made a misplay, maybe he was a little nervous, and as a result, we walked away with the win. Personally, 793,000 credits, 7,400 experience, witherer and confederate, just shy of 180,000 damage with 433 shells, only two kills. But this was kind of all about teamwork and maybe not as focused on the teamwork, but just focusing down targets and never giving up on the game. And if you do that, you can walk away with some amazing wins and often some very high experience games. Armored Chimera and I, number one and two on the team, you can see he picked up four kills, the most crucial being that Benson right at the end of the game. And the North Carolina that made this all possible for us walked away with three kills of his own and a good chunk of XP. And when you look at the damage I've done, the two targets I killed I didn't do a lot of damage to, but there's a grosser curve first and another BB that I just wrecked about half of each of their hit points. And then somehow I managed to absorb 1.1 million potential damage shot at me, which is definitely a lot for a lightly armored cruiser like the Kutuzov. And end of the day, premium ship, kind of premium currency I'm taking home, 679,000 credits and 21,000 experience for my uh, Soviet commander who definitely still needs it. Even with the new uh, elite commanders, I only really had enough experience to move one or two of my captains up to 19 pointers. So the rest, it's still just grinding the good old way. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you guys tomorrow.